Hi, I'm Tom Martin and welcome to this week's episode of Talk Pensions and Benefits UK. This week, my guest is Louise Embling. Louise is an experienced reward director working in the UK IT sector. And this week's episode is a little bit different because we don't talk about pensions or benefits. We're actually talking about mental health, well-being, remaining engaged and positive and looking out for one another over the past eight or nine months. I really enjoyed my conversation with Louise because she gives some real honest first-hand examples of some of the struggles that she's had and what she's done to come through this pandemic as unscathed as possible. It was a fantastic episode to record. So I hope you enjoy listening to it and I look forward to speaking to you all soon. When we talk about mental health and COVID, it's not actually always about ourselves. I have a fear of my mum. So my mum is the only person really that I spend a lot of time with at the moment. We're in a bubble. She's Mm -hmm. on her own. I'm on my own. And she's asthmatic. So my overriding aim and any anxiety comes with protecting my mother. And so I, I stopped running. Um, because there's this theory there was this article that you're breathing heavily when you're running so anyone that's possibly got COVID and asymptomatic could be breathing at you when you pass so I went and got an indoor spin bike I used to go to a gym and was missing spin so I chose to do that and then I took up other platforms there's loads of platforms that people can use and get a free trial to to do a different aerobics at home it doesn't have to be on a spin bike which is is an expensive option right but there's a lot of cheaper ones um and it's yes adapting to our situation is key um because we have to keep again that structure that we discussed um but keep the keep the health aspect going i think there's something to be said about your immune system i think that is very strongly linked to your mental health and if you slump mentally i think it opens you up physically Mm. to get sick right yes so we need to stay healthy um And I think, talking about COVID and mental health, it it does sound all very depressing, but I think there's a nice, there's a positive aspect. And again, it's all about being positive at the moment. So I think when I'm engaging with my peers, it's all about the positive side of COVID. I have made new friends. Mm -hmm. I've I've got a new hobby. I've got a much stronger bond with my mum, if that was humanly possible, because I'm spending more time with her. And I think that's important that we can evangelise as employers. That can be evangelised to keep people, you know, much more engaged and motivated is, you know, writing down what have you achieved since the start of the year? What's different? How, how have you adapted? You know, and you, so you've taken up running, right? Mm-hmm. So we spoke about, when we messaged have you looked into these virtual runs no i haven't i've I've seen some people suggest it but i haven't actually looked into it i'm 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 in the category of i kind of sometimes i'll plan a route um but a lot of the times i'm shoes on headphones in and i'm gone um so i haven't done anything too structured on that apart from investing a decent pair of running shoes um but it's all it's 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 fascinating the bits that people have come up with yeah virtual runs how how, how do they work okay so actually virtual runs have always been a thing um and and often it's like i actually am very blessed in that i have taken part in a disney run because that as a runner is one of the most fantastic things that you can do right but it's not always possible um because it is you know it's it's very costly and you know there's a lot of time involved to to actually take you know whether it's you or your family to a disney resort to do all these runs um so you you, there's there's been a disney option for a while now and other people were joining in and offering virtual runs and it's a great way of being part of a community and you'll find a lot of virtual challenges where you can complete the challenge uh, on say for example one of the platforms like strava and mm. when you've completed the challenge you get a badge a oh, nice yes. pat on the back yeah. yeah but you get like a discount code yeah um i'm actually thinking 
again for me it's all I think I've been on, on this journey of I'm getting so much out of trying to evangelize to others how I've helped myself and so I've chosen one of my favorite run series in the area I live Berkshire and Oxfordshire um they're actually offering they normally do a, a Santa run they're offering a virtual this year and it's for a children's charity and I just think it would be really fun on Saturday the 19th of December I'm going to be running around the village dressed for Santa it's <laughs> just silly it's going to make people laugh um but it, I can brilliant. still do my Santa run yeah. um and it's just it, it's how do I keep myself mentally well and others because I think next year will be the year where we actually really start seeing the impact mm. of how COVID has affected em employees mm. and we we need to be massaging the effect um, uh, but but I think it's also important to remember that we don't have to stress everyone has to do exercise no. not everyone wants to or can I've got a friend of mine who's got COPD right um for him walking is an issue um so it, it's all about having different hobbies right but mm. i think it's important to pick pick something um it, it is i'm sure it's fun to sit and watch films and movies all, all day but it's it, it's not helping your mm. health um and people are actually I, I did uh see um in the last i want to say the last five days there was someone wondering about you know everyone's obviously walking at the moment is that really doing anything you know and yes it is mm -hmm. it was the you know the effects on your health mm -hmm. of just walking and it, it you know it is it, it's used to prevent issues with um i think it's high blood pressure um heart disease type 2 diabetes um but again, you're getting outside and you're getting that vitamin D. The, the lack of vitamins is an issue when it comes mm. to staying well, right? So um, I think employers need to be, and I think I, from what I've seen, they are evangelizing all these different things that people can do. And you touched upon this whole idea of, you know, just one more half hour or just another hour. It, it, it's got to be um, separated into your work and your social time. So it, it can be as simple as um, meet, arranging to meet someone outside for a walk at lunch, but you can also engage with your peers and do something fun at lunch that is an exercise. And mm -hmm. a few months ago, I did uh, one of the escape rooms. There's loads of online escape rooms. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And many of them are free. If you look, there are free ones. And instead of having a lunch um, where we did exercise, a load of us joined a Zoom call and I facilitated the escape room. And I had all my Comic-Con memorabilia out. I was Harry Potter. I even had the scar, had my <laughs> muggle T-shirt. And it's, you know, again, it's engaging staff and your peers to do something fun yeah. because when was the last time you got to go to escape rooms you no, know definitely i think it's amazing that you know anyone who has listened to the first couple of podcasts that we've we've already done you know joe holness who is a, a health and well-being uh, consultant speaks at great length about all the things that can be put into practice that don't cost you you know, they really don't, like you just said, they could be free, they could be very, very cheap, you know, all these tools online at people's disposal are just infinite. Um, and I was talking to, to, to Girish uh, at Premier, and he was saying, similar to what you've just said in the sense of, you know, they were doing online cooking classes, yoga classes, you know, it wasn't, it doesn't have to be about exercise, it's just bringing people together, making sure that no one's isolated, no one's you know, left to fend for themselves. There is that support network there. And the best example I've had, and I've used this analogy with almost, you know, everyone that I've spoken to, I think will probably have heard this story. I, there was a, two phone calls that I had really early on. 
uh, during this pandemic. And I had two phone calls and one was with a very senior level business leader um, who was, for want of a better phrase, moaning at being locked down. And I think I, I, I really kind of agreed with him in a lot of points that he made. You know, if I'm not, I'm trying to work, but the kids are running around and it's too hot and my house needs air conditioning. And we were just moaning and, and putting the world to rights. Um, and then right at the end, he said, I don't know why I'm moaning. I've got a five bedroom house in the middle of the country with a massive garden. I shouldn't be moaning. And within two days, I spoke to someone who lived in a one bedroom flat on his own. He had cystic fibrosis. So there was no way of going outside. You know, you are as, as, as high a, uh, a higher risk as, as one can be. And his outlook was so, was, was, was the complete opposite. You know, bored of Netflix, bored of Amazon Prime. I've ordered a secondhand keyboard off eBay and I'm using my iPad to teach myself how to play the piano. Nice. And it was like, I'm just getting on with it. I get up, I open the windows, I get a breeze in here, you know, and I just deal with it. How to deal with it. And you just think, here I am moaning. Here I am moaning, but I can still go out for a run. I can still take the kids for a walk. You know, I can still do stuff. I've still got, you know, the garden and I've still got all these other bits and pieces. And here's someone who you could argue is, is in a much worse situation much much worse very isolated very locked down that has just got the best outlook and it just almost it was kind of the kick up the backside that i think my brain needed but like you just said it's not it doesn't have to be oh i've done a 10k run or a 20k hike or this that and the other you know before we hit record you were talking about baking you were talking about indian bollywood dancing which is amazing when when else would you have taken that up never you know and it's just absolutely fascinating i was speaking to a colleague about the running and and, and anyone that's seen my linkedin will know that i'm into running at the moment and there's quite a bit of friendly competition on strava between you know some of the team at work and someone was asking me from you know a colleague was asking me about oh how do i improve my time how do i change this and i'm, I'm by no means an expert but i was chatting through well you know train on the hills make sure you've got the right diet make sure you're going at the right time of the day you know don't push yourself too hard and it was just but that was the message it was like are you enjoying it are you enjoying it going at you know at, at an average speed of six minutes a kilometer yeah so why do you want to come down to five and a half minutes a kilometer five minutes mm. a kilometer like i'm quite competitive in myself so i needed that in a way but if it gets to a point where reducing that time you know, like your dancing or like the, the online yoga or the online escape room, if it gets to a point where that's no longer enjoyable and that's actually becoming a bit of a chore, it's, it's lost its purpose. It's, yeah. Everyone needs to remember, just, just do whatever you have to do to have fun. If it brings a smile on your face and it stops a bit of anxiety and a bit of worry and stressing about the world out there, whatever it is, just do it. Because yeah. coming out of this, if you come out of this in one piece, you're winning. You know, it doesn't yes. matter if you doesn't matter if you've lost weight, gained weight, spent money, saved money. Does not matter as long yeah. as you come out of this. You know, I I applaud you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I think th there's actually some one of my coaches would say to me with in terms of sport and running um as long as you're putting one foot in front of the other it doesn't fast matter how fast you're moving you're moving forwards and you know yeah it just keep moving forward you've just got to get through this period and i think it's important to evangelize um the aspects of what i like to say to people i have spoken to people inside and outside of the work network you know some of them my friends but you know some of them are actually people i work with and you can tell when they're having a bad day and i try and say to them at the moment i think the key message to give at the moment is we're nearly there we're talking about vaccines we're yeah. nearly there it is it, so short a time now just keep going um and we will get there together but it's important that when you're talking to people to actually try and listen i think to how they're feeling because mm. 
we touched upon, you know, your situation is different to mine um, in terms of human interaction, perhaps. But how hard is it at the start of any work phone call that you just ask someone, you know, how are they, are they OK? Mm. Or, or spend a couple of minutes. I, I literally every call I have now. What did you do at the weekend? You know, it, yep. what have you watched? And it, in it's checking mentally checking in with people i personally think it's one of my key drivers at the moment obviously it's to get my work done but it's to check that people are fine and sometimes a call that you're having with someone that is their only interaction if it's a, someone's doing a job that's particularly spreadsheet intensive they may not have as many calls as you or i have and they are literally not seeing people and it's really nice to turn your video on and and to chat and they can see you and have that level of humor and interaction someone mm. that works for me is literally in a flat in manila on their own wow. um and it's having a hard time because they can't see their dad who's very far away and even if they did travel there they don't feel safe being around him and it's trying to engage with him not just you know you could argue i don't want him to have any sick days from mental health that's that's not what it is for me personally i want him to be well he he works so hard for me i want him to feel good because he's a good nice person yeah. um so we have that level of interaction we've had really honest conversations about mental health or or about all manner of topics actually um but i feel that that's opened up a much stronger body bond between him and I but sometimes that level of interaction I think is actually a really good healthy part of his day because yeah. he's chatting with someone definitely and I found that again I'm, I'm still finding it now you know we're into we're nearly into December like you say it feels like there's light at the end of the tunnel hopefully so um, but even now I find myself speaking to people and it's quite clear that I am one of the few phone calls that person is going to have that day. Yeah. You know, and, and who am I? I'm a you know, lowly recruiter trying to find someone a job, you know, but it's, yeah, those, those quick one minute, two minute free conversations, they're now 10 minutes because like you just said, you know, just have a chat about the weather. How are they feeling? What they watch on TV, the football, the, you know, I can chat with anyone about near enough anything, you know, and it's, it doesn't cost anything. It really doesn't just and I, I, I sound like I'm being, you know, a bit of a bit of a pariah here by saying, oh, you know, we should all be doing this because I'm sure everyone is doing this. But it takes a moment to take a step back and realize I am doing that. I should do it more. Do you know what I mean? I shouldn't just say, oh, how are you? You're all right. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. It's a case of, well, actually, let's let's listen to their answer. Let's actually engage with their answer. You know, the primary objective of any conversation should be that. Everything else, whether it's booking an interview or closing a deal or to picking up a job or everything else that is part of my day to day, that's, that's kind of secondary. The primary stuff is the human stuff, like you keep saying, Louise, where we're all human beings. It's our responsible to look after each other. We're all in this together. Do you know what I mean? Right. So there's no there's no gold medal for coming out of this in the best possible way. There's no award for the best, most resilient person. It's right. We just need to look after each other and just make sure that we all come out of this because mental health, well being, that is a pandemic in itself. You know? Yes, and and what we spoke about earlier, it's you know there are issues with. Uh, staff retention, presente presenteeism, and mm -hmm. engagement. If we do not handle this correctly, yeah. um, and I think I, for example, have an unwavering loyalty to my employer because I think they have handled it absolutely first class. I, 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 I literally it think it's almost written in a textbook how they've done it and 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 there are many employees i think that are perhaps not getting that mm. and and should and you know employers will see the result of how they handled their staff mm. when we come out of lockdown yeah. and 
you know, it is really important, but again, not just as employers, but as human beings, because yes, we are in this together. And I think another positive of COVID is that perhaps globally, we have all bonded. There are way more things that I've done for other people and will continue to do as a result of COVID, you know, I liked the volunteering and I've been looking after a few people in the village that are very sick and they can't do things. And it's just all been, I think, uh, terrifying for all, but also a nice bonding exercise. And I do sometimes think that things happen for a reason. And I think the world needed to stop, calm down and be a bit nicer to each other. Oh, do you know what? I think what what a comment to to close on, because I think you are so, so right in what you've just said in the sense of I think we all needed a dose of perspective to hit the pause button and just assess where we're all at. Um, And again, the topic about employers, you know, I I speak to so many people who have great employers and have really looked after them. You know, again, going back to the podcast um, earlier in the series with Girish, you know, they've got a 95% employee engagement because of they have been making sure that they're accessible, that no one feels isolated, that they are doing all the extracurricular stuff, all the, 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 the baking and the yoga and the pub quizzes, as well as the daily kind of check-ins with, with work, with teams, with managers and what have you. And suffice to say, I've spoken to quite a few people who I think will be grinding this out and then looking for a new job because their employers could have done better. In hindsight, it's a wonderful thing, you know, but it's not too late to perhaps think, okay, we didn't do that as well as we should have, or we didn't do that as well as we've had this company do it. Let's make a shift. But I am seeing there's quite a few employers who perhaps haven't done as well as they could and and are almost whether it's out of ignorance or whether it's out of arrogance are just gonna no we're we're going on this path no they don't you know we don't need to do a virtual pub quiz we don't need to make sure that these free online courses are available we don't need to you know offer flexible working when all this is over you know tunnel vision let's just get back everyone in the office it's a dangerous game to retain staff that way because the good employers have really, really kind of, you know, shone through. So I think you're totally right there. So before we finish, I've got to ask, are you going to be doing the virtual Santa run? Oh, well, I'm going to, I I actually wrote it down. So the 19th, I don't have an outfit though. So no, no, no. So part of your entry is they sent you the outfit. Oh God, there's no excuse now. Jesus. (laughs) Course, you, no can even, you can <laughs> have a female or a male Santa, out, Santa outfit. There's a kid's one. Oh, wow. There we go. There's no getting out of it now. And, and I, no. I, think, I think I've just heard you say that my colleagues have to take part as well. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's a, it's, a, it's a company thing, is it? Oh, I see. Right. Well, I'll sign everyone up. <laughs> and then all the people do it and watch this space, watch on LinkedIn. So, um, yeah, that's no, a great shout. So, Louise, thank you so much for joining thank me you. today. It's been absolutely amazing to share your insights. And, um, yeah, I think some of the points you've made have been absolutely spot on. And I think a lot of our viewers and listeners will be, will be a lot of it will resonate with them. But like I said, and like you said, just, just, get through it just stay strong whatever you have to do if it's walking running baking yoga watching netflix whatever it is if it makes you smile that's all that matters right now